Today's video is all about cheap, very cheap, Amorgic S905W TV boxes and which ones we think are the best out of the three very cheap TV boxes I have here and we've done reviews for over the past couple of weeks. My name is Matthew and you're watching a new review by the MQ Project. So here we have three TV boxes, all for less than $40, actually even a little bit cheaper than that actually. If you're in the UK, about £35, £30, something like that. Our group of TV boxes are all S905W boxes, because these are very, very cheap. It's a very cheap processor. But we're not interested in the specifications, we're not really. We're more interested in how they perform and how well developed the firmware is. We're here at the MQ Project, Nova is mainly the firmware that makes a good cheap TV box rather than the hardware, although a relatively fast NAND.EMMC storage chip is useful as well. First up is a B-Link box, it is the W95 fitted with the S905W. Now this is an interesting device as it is the very first cheap TV box to come from B-Link in a long while. This device, however, did not get off to a very good start, really. Unlike B-Link's former cheap device like the B-Link X2, we really love that device, by the way. The W.95 did not come with OTA system updates and was missing some very crucial aspects from the firmware, such as the drop-down task menus in which a lot of people commented on. It did, however, finally receive a much needed update which enabled those features again and allowed OTA updates to come through in the future. This is a great budget device for those wanting a well-built product from a solid Chinese brand. B-Link will no doubt continue to support this product throughout 2018 with system updates and system tweaks. One final note about the W95 is the fact that it has a locked bootloader. This means other operating systems such as LibreOS cannot be booted and we have tried. This is a shame but no doubt B-Link will at some point send an, an update out to root the device, fingers crossed anyway, because they did that with the B-Link X2 and it allowed it to boot other things and as you've seen on different videos we've actually booted Ambient on the B-Link X2. Next up is the X96 Mini, one of our absolute favourites here at the MSQ project. This micro size dev device really packs a lot into such a small enclosure. This little box features a choice between 1GB and 2GB of RAM. We received the 1GB version and found it to be more than adequate really. This box has been sold for as little as $21 which is around £15 here in the UK, barely anything. But the price has you know, since gone back up slightly. The firmware is stable, although don't expect too much in terms of OTA system updates. But the great feature of this device is the extended IR receiver that this comes with. Not seen on too many boxes, to be honest. To summarise, I think this device is a great budget box and can be placed pretty much anywhere as it has the IR extension. So if you wanted to just put it out of sight behind the box, behind your TV for example and you can do that it does have that IO extension poking out somewhere and you'll be good to go it's incredibly small and well built as well and it can also boot LibreLec and you know it really makes this a really truly versatile device you know you get an Android as well as the ability to boot LibreLec you can't ask more than that for $21 can you Finally, we have the Alice box. We've just done a review on this actually by Tanix. It's also known as the Tanix TX3 Max, a successor to the Tanix TX3 we did a review on not so long ago. This is a very interesting box as we can see straight away that Tanix have put a lot of effort into the development of this device. With this Alex, Alice even, user experience. Now we've seen these types of things or gimmicks if you like before from China. Chinese manufacturers but having a look through this device's firmware it is clear they have gone to a lot of effort to ensure the Tonics TX3 Max has a lot of features that other S905W cheap TV boxes don't have. The system runs smooth and fast, the video playback is good and Cody runs pretty well as well. The only negative points I would make would 
be the gaming aspect isn't all that great. But to be honest, a lot of S905W devices suffer the same issue. This box also supports Libra. I actually just tried this yesterday and it and it actually booted up. Wi-Fi works, etc. And it was all running fine. KZAC doesn't actually officially support the S905W just yet. Just use S905X DTB files when setting it up. And you can obviously check that out with other videos we've done. I'll leave those links in the description if you want them. Or a link will just appear at the top of me just now. Right, so finally, all three devices I've shown here are great. They are, they're really good, I really like them. They're very cheap, you can't ask for more really. But the Tannix Day Extreme Max is just that little bit better, I think. I see Tannix providing a considerable amount of support for this device throughout 2018. And we've seen a number of TV boxes coming from Tannix, and most of them have been pretty good, apart from a few exceptions. And we've done a couple of those reviews just in the past. I think there was one S912 box, which was... Not so good, but there we go. We can't all make great things all the time, I guess. Don't forget to check out our website, mxqproject.com, Twitter at mxqproject, and of course, our Facebook group. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, have a very good one. We shall see you very, very soon.